They represent the victims of gun violence in our nation's schools since and including Columbine. As you can see, it's abundantly clear that we're not doing enough to protect our students and our schools from gun violence. Just this morning, another school shooting took place at a school in Florida, in Ocala. That's the 20th this year, and it's only April 20th. Thankfully, there was only one victim that was injured in the ankle during the shooting. And while authorities are calling the injury non-life-threatening, the incident is certainly life-altering for the students, the staffs, and their family of the high school in Ocala. Their collective sense of safety was shattered today as their school now gets added to the list of schools that have been traumatized by gun violence. From Columbine to Virginia Tech to Sandy Hook to Marshall County and to Parkland, Florida, 227 lives have been lost to gun violence. I'd like us all to share a moment of silence to remember and honor the precious lives lost to these senseless acts of violence. Each week it seems we're mourning another, pa another massacre in our schools. The reality of this loss is devastating. Our hearts may be breaking, but our resolve must be strong. It's time we say enough is enough. Enough is enough. We must demand action now to save lives from gun violence. We must follow the lead of the students standing up across our great nation. Students who survived bullets and are no longer afraid of politicians and are leading the way to make their schools safer. Students calling for bans on assault weapons and high capacity ammunition magazines, stronger background checks, and increased access to and funding for mental health resources. Our role as educators has always been important, but everything seems different now. Every day we must ask ourselves, what are we going to do to help? Now we must also ask ourselves, how will I be a role model for justice? Our foremost priority as educators is to ensure the safety and well-being of all our students. We all have a professional responsibility to create safe schools and communities. Every day we answer the call to receive into our schools that which every parent considers to be the most precious to them and to return them safely home at the end of the day. Look behind me. Empty chairs and classrooms cannot become the new normal. Training on how to engage an active shooter and how to apply tourniquets to elementary school students cannot become a normal part of our professional development. Enough is enough. We want no more children murdered in school. No more parents sending a child to school who never comes home. No more teachers, coaches, principals, librarians, or any other school staff standing between students and a gunman. No more. We're demanding action now on a comprehensive plan to end gun violence. This plan cannot include arming teachers. Doing so will only turn our schools into prisons. Our students need more books. They need more art classes. They need more music programs, more nurses, more school counselors, more resources. Not more guns in their classrooms. The suggestion that we train, arm, and reward educators to carry weapons in their classroom is simply a distraction from solving the real problem. The very dangerous people have very easy access to very dangerous weapons. We need solutions that keep guns out of the hands of those who want to use them to massacre innocent children and educators. We need to listen to what educators, parents, students, mental health professionals, community members, first responders are telling us how to best protect our schools. And that's why we're here today. And in New Hampshire has established a broad coalition of stakeholders that are dedicated to addressing the issues of school safety and mental health. To begin that process, we'll be holding a series of community forums to find ways to help engage students, schools, educators, and communities, and parents, and other professionals around these issues. The first community forum is going to be held here in Concord at the NEA New Hampshire office on May 22nd. Postcards with details about this meeting are available at the tables for the staff members. We realize the need to dramatically expand our focus on mental health. Proper diagnosis often starts in our schools, yet there's a huge shortage of school counselors, school social workers, and school psychologists in public education. 
No politician is going to tell us what's best for our classrooms. No merchant death of lobbyist organization is going to tell, tell us how to make our classrooms safer by arming educators. No billionaires with zero classroom experience are going to tell us that our schools are broken, unfixable, and that we are to blame. We are the experts on what it takes to make a classroom safe, a desirable place to work. We need to realize that the full potential of our combined action to lead, to make positive change, to improve the lives of our students, their families, and the communities in which we all live. The failure to enact rational laws to prevent mass shootings is inexcusable. The time to act is now. Every child deserves to learn in a school that's safe. Students, parents, and educators should not have to live in fear of being the next victim. Our voices have never been needed more than in this very moment. Amen. Thank you. We must be more than words if we are to enact positive change, and we must lead the way. NEA New Hampshire's vision is a society made better through public education. Now is the time for each of us to make that vision a reality. I would now like to introduce Becky Pringle, who is the Vice President of NEA.